Welcome back to the Designer YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to create this. Now, if that looks good, please subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, and comment any questions or suggestions you have for future videos in the comments below. Let's dive in. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is open up Photoshop and import our image, and then we need to cut out the bulb. So to do that, we select the pen tool from the toolbar on the left side, zoom in, control or command and the plus symbol, click on the first point, and a little bit further around the bulb, click and hold and bend the curve. You don't need to worry about getting it exact because we can come back and edit this afterwards. Just needs to be a more or less cutting around the illustration. Okay, now if you come over to the left side and click on the direct selection tool, it might be underneath the black cursor, so click and hold, direct selection tool. Zoom in again once more, and using the arrow keys on my keyboard, I'm just gonna nudge this, nudge these around. You can move these handles as you like just to ensure we've got a smooth curve that goes around the outside. Of the bulb. Okay, perfect. Once you're happy with that, right click, select make selection, ensure feather is set to zero pixels and click okay on windows. Click Control C on Mac Command C, come up to our Layers panel, Control or Command V. That will paste the newly cut out object into the background. Next, we need to edit the background color. So select the background from the Layers panel, come down to our Adjustment Layers and click Color Lookup. In the first drop down, scroll all the way down to the bottom and we've got Moonlight 3DL. And if done correctly, you should now see a darker moonlit image for the hands and background. It's looking good. Okay, up to our bulb layer, we need to right click and convert to smart object. And then we need to duplicate that layer. We can do that by clicking Control or Command J. And we need to add a filter of blur. So go up to the top with our new layer, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Insert a radius of five pixels and click OK. Repeat this again, Command J or Control J and edit the Gaussian blur. This time, set a radius of 20 pixels. Repeat one last time, edit the Gaussian blur and 125 pixels. Click OK. Okay, now that's looking kind of crazy. We can't really see the element of the bulb, so we need to come back down to our original cutout layer, which we haven't edited, and drag it all the way to the top. Now the blur only exists on the outside of the bulb image. Looking good. Okay, next we need to group these layers together. So clicking the first layer, coming all the way down, selecting everything but the color, lookup, and background layers. Hold Shift, select the bottom layer, and click Group. Now you can see, if we turn it on or off, the bulb layers are all nicely packaged in this group. Okay, down to our adjustment layers again and we need to add a hue saturation layer. We need to click colorize, and what you'll notice is the entire image gets colored, which is not what we want. So we need to create a clipping mask, which essentially clips the effects of our hue saturation layer to the previous layer. To do that, we click on this icon on the bottom corner, bottom left of the bar, and that should just clip everything we affect now, just to the ball. So hue, I want it around an orangey yellow color, so I'm happy with that. Saturation, I'm gonna bring that up into the mid 70s. I want it quite bright. And lightness up into uh, the mid late 40s, yeah, that looks good. Okay, perfect. Next, we need to create an outer glow around our bulb, because although the bulb looks really reasonably realistic, there's no glow on the hands whatsoever, and the background is completely dark. So to do that, we take our hue saturation layer, 
Command J to duplicate and drag it all the way down under the group, not inside, but under the group on top of the color lookup. Again, the effects are now affecting the background and, and absolutely everything. So we need to click Command I. And what that'll do is that'll invert the hue saturation layer by masking it. And the best, best example I can provide of that is when you may see kids with a, a, a scratch pad or a scratch mat. So it's essentially is including a mask over the top and anything you scratch off will show through the design underneath. So what we need to do is got our pen tool. We need to select the white brush, 3000 pixels for our size, soft round, the opacity at 100 and the flow at 20. Ensure you have the black mask area selected. And now what we're gonna do is paint just by clicking. Try not to drag because it does affect. Kind of creates messy lines. Where it's clicks, so we can get a nice glow. And what that's doing is actually deleting, if you see now on the right hand side, space inside of our mask, revealing the glow underneath. So that's looking pretty cool. Next, we need to create a direct highlight underneath the bulb and on the hands. So though there's a nice glow coming off, there's, there should be a bright highlight around the bulb on the hands. So create a new layer, uh, yellow for the color, select our paintbrush tool, soft round for the brush, and the size will set to 250 pixels, the opacity at 100 and the flow also at 100. We zoom in, so for this, this part we need to ensure that we're actually only painting the fingers and not in between the fingers or the background because the light wouldn't show up that crisp in the background. Don't worry, it looks a little bit crazy for now. We have a setting to tidy that up. All right, once you've done that, come up to color blend menu and select color dodge. And then in the fill panel, drop the opacity down to 20. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna go with 15. Okay. There's a couple of areas of there with the glow that I'm not super happy about. So I can take my razor tool and just slowly slowly remove some of the more unrealistic areas so the glow really only remains on the hands. Okay, looking good. Okay, next we're gonna paint some highlights coming up to the sky. So we come back to our color lookup panel, just above the background, select the color as black, get our paintbrush, and make it 600 in size, the opacity at 30 and the flow at 20. And this will essentially be streams of light coming out from the bulb up into the sky. You can just paint them like this. Okay, cool, that looks good. Okay, last step, just adding some stars. So again with our paintbrush tool, we select a size of 100, flow and opacity both set to 100, and we can just start dropping in some random stars. Looks good, create a new layer, and increase the brush size, put some bigger stars around. Okay, so for that second layer, I'm gonna blur the stars slightly. I'm gonna set to a blur of around 60 pixels. Does that look like? Yeah, that looks pretty cool. The original layer will also add a blur. For that one, because they're smaller stars, you want a slightly smaller blur. That looks great. One last thing, I'm gonna add in some very, very small stars. At around 20 pixels. And 
this is all, this is all optional of course but I do think it makes the design look better I'm just randomly placing these around some more in the center okay cool filter blur Gaussian blur and I'll drop the blur for this one down to about 10 so we do want them to show up and that's it Thank you so much for watching the video. We hope you liked it. If you did, please subscribe to the channel, give us a like, and drop a comment below for any suggestions for future tutorials you may have. Until next time.